Hi guys, it's Bella. Um, today is Korean Liberation Day, so I thought it'd be a fun idea to post an interview of my dad interviewing some Korean soldiers um, at the time he was in 8th Army in Korea. Um, and this video is from <coughs> two years ago. Uh, but I thought since it's a special holiday, uh, I thought it'd be a good idea to post this video today. Sorry it took so long, you guys, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, Mass Sergeant Estrada here with, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm uh, Corporal Ku Kyo Hyun. My name is Sergeant Lee Yong Hee. And we're uh, doing this uh, interview uh, for Isabella Estrada for her uh, YouTube channel. So uh, we got a couple of questions and we're going to go ahead and ask these extremely high speed Katusas that uh, are on the uh, SGS uh, command group team here at 8th Army. So the first question I have is, what is your name and where are you from? So I'll start with uh, Sergeant Lee. So my name again is uh, Sergeant Lee Yong-hee. I'm from Seoul, but I lived on overseas at Vancouver for quite a few years. And uh, Corporal Koo? I'm Corporal Koo and I've been, I was born in Seoul, same as Sergeant Lee, but I've been uh, from kindergarten to high school, I spent my time in uh, Tokyo, Japan, and now I go to college in Seoul again. All right, and now we have another special guest. Uh, all right, if you can go ahead and take a seat there, Private Kim. Uh, the first question we have is, uh, what is your name and where are you from? So, my name is uh, Kim ha -hoon, and I am from Cheongju, which is like the middle, right middle of South Korea. Awesome. Okay. I appreciate that. Um, Senior Katusa, uh, if you could answer this question, number two, what is a Katusa and what does it stand for? So first, Katusa stands for Korean Augmentation to the United States Army. And as the name suggests, we support the mission of the U.S. Army here in Peninsula. Um, and why do the Katusas exist? So the Katusa program began during the Korean War, after the agreement of the president of South Korea back then, and General MacArthur, uh, just a few days after the war began, sure. uh, because the American army needed support from the Korean army and due to the lack of soldiers and also due to um, their need for regional knowledge and language support. And that has continued on until today. I appreciate that. Really good answer. Uh, next question is, um, could you talk a little bit about regular conscription, the uh, conscription timeline and how uh, how being a Katusa is different? So how long is a conscription um, private camp? Well, conscription really depends on which part of, uh, which part you're in. For, so for example, if you're in the army, it's like a year and a half. For like the navies, it's like a bit longer, like year and nine months, I believe. Um, but Katusas will be the part of the Korean army. So we, we are conscribed for a year and a half. Okay. Would it be different if, uh, can you also do your conscription as like law enforcement or something like that? Uh, or does it have to be the military? Well, there are certain uh, specific types of jobs you could do. You could work as a doctor or like for a conscription instead. So that's that'll be like uh, working as an officer. Okay. Or like a surgeon or law enforcement or other type of companies you could work there for as well. Now I do know in my, you know, three years that I've been here in Korea, um, it was closer to two years when I first got here and it's reduced. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Is it, uh, 
going to continue to reduce in in time or uh what was it in 2019 and what is it today or excuse me what was it in 2018 and what is it today so it's part of the government's effort to um decrease the number of soldiers okay corresponding to the korean population which is uh currently decreasing and from what we know it's gonna continue to decrease over time okay uh next question how hard is it to become a katusa to become a katusa it honestly is about your luck okay probably so you have to take English exams and if you make the cut for the exam then you go through a pretty much a lottery of maybe um, 7 to 1 ratio so every one person out of 8 gets to be in the Katusa program all right what did each of you do when you found out you were going to be part of the Katusa program? Were you happy? Did you share it with your family? What went through your mind? Private Kim, since you're the, the youngest. Well, I was contemplating on between if I should continue my school with grad school or if I should work as a Korean army soldier. Okay. And, um, well, I kind of wanted to take a break from my studies, so I was really happy when I got in so that I could work at not only as a, a Korean soldier, but also doing the, all the conscriptions I need. Right. So I'm taking both the break and working with my conscription, so I was really happy with that. Sergeant Lee, uh, what was your um, you know, expression when you found out that you were gonna become a Katusa? Well, as Ku said, it's a lorry system, and it's uh, quite competitive. So I was happy when I heard that I got in, but uh, not just in terms of luck, but um, you know, you get to work with some of the uh, US soldiers, which you would have never been able to if you weren't in the Katusa program. Right. So I thought uh, that was unique and I was happy to hear about it. And you, Corporal Koo? I personally was contemplating on just going to the Rock Army but cool. I just applied for the Katusa program just in case I got in. And luckily, uh, I was accepted into the Katusa program, so I really didn't look back. Yeah. And when I first got the message on my phone, I was in the PC room playing video games, so I had no idea. Like, I was like, mm, okay, I don't know what that means. And then after I, I was done with the video game, and I was go like, I went home. Yeah. I just realized, wow. <laughs> I'm, I got into the Katusa program, so I was right. really happy, you know, I texted all my family and friends. Well, I know uh, just talking with the Katusas during our interview process, a lot of them look forward to having the opportunity to go on pass every single weekend. So is that a big plus in being a Katusa? What are some of the other things that uh, you look forward to besides serving alongside the United States Army? What are the, some of the benefits? So some of the perks or the benefits that we have as Katusas? Unlike the uh, regular army soldiers at the rock site, we get to go on weekly pass, as my sergeant mentioned. And some of the facilities are um, are <laughs> more sophisticated than in the rock counterpart because uh, up until a few few years ago in the rock army, we did not have uh, beds for soldiers. Okay. We would be in like a very there'd be a large wooden <laughs> floor. like an elevated surface or an elevated surface surface where um, we could have our blankets yeah to sleep like to sleep yeah i think i've done that when i have high dif different uh, mountains and the shelters it's uh, a similar setup so um yeah that's a that's a good point why uh you have certain benefits in being a katusa uh the next question i have is um what university did you go to? Uh, did you graduate from, or are you continually going to once you finish your conscription? So I'll start with uh, Private Kim. So I graduated from University of California, San Diego at, in 2016. And right now after that, I was in a dental school in Korea. So I finished my first year. And after my conscription years, I will continue on for the second, second grade for another three years to become a dentist. 
That's awesome. And uh, Sergeant Lee? I graduated with an engineering, electrical engineering background uh, from Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, which is called, for, uh, called as KAIST. And uh, since I graduated, I'll, uh, go, I'll be going back to my work. Okay. And then uh, Corporal Koo? Uh, I was studying before I was conscripted at the Korea University in Seoul. And I was, um, I, my major is in business administration, and I'll continue my studies after my cons conscription as a sophomore. And I look forward to it. The, uh, the next question, I know a lot of you have already touched on a little bit, but have, uh, have any of you studied abroad? I know you referenced San Diego. Anywhere else besides San Diego that are uh, private camp? Well, when I was in elementary school, from first to third grade, I was in Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, okay. And also, during high school year, uh, from sophomore to senior year, I was in Fairfield, Connecticut. And then I went to the West Coast for my university. Years. Nashville, Tennessee? Yes. Did you ever go to the Grand Ole Opry? I probably did, but I don't remember because I was seven. <laughs> and, uh, sorry, Lee, how about yourself? So uh, I spent my last few years of elementary school and also the secondary school years at Canada, Vancouver. And so all my teenagehood, I've been in Canada before coming to university back here in Korea. Do you, uh, I know you want to go back to California. We had that private conversation. Um, how about yourself, certainly? Do you want to go back to Canada or would you like to stay here in Korea once you're done with your conscription? Well, for the probably during my 20s and 30s, I would like to work here. Okay. With, uh, since I think there are more opportunities here, and maybe I'll consider going to back to Vancouver once I'm uh, retired or something. Yeah, nice. And then uh, Corporal Ku, where have you studied abroad? So I was born in Korea here, but for, I was raised in Japan, actually, from the age of Three, three to eighteen. So I, I've actually spent my almost my entire life in Japan, and I think for the time being, because of my conscription and studies, I'll be staying in Korea. Okay. But, um, uh, later on in my career, I might go back to Japan because I really miss that place, and it's a, it's also a really nice place to live. So. The, uh, the last question I have for you is, uh, what do you plan to do after your conscription is over? And um, where do you want, uh, or what do you want people to know specifically about the Katusa program? So, two part question there. Private Kim, if you want to start. Um, so, since I was in a mid uh, break of my dental school, if I'm done with my conscription, I will definitely go for my school and finish my uh, residency and become like a work in a dental clinic. And about the Katusa program, I would say there are so many jobs, even though it's all categorized as Katusas. So um, when whenever there's the possible, whenever there's like different kinds of opportunities, um, don't hesitate to strive for them, because working as here, like with all the officers and generals, will be one of the most valuable experiences that I'll ever have. Um, during my conscription years and for, throughout my life. So, thank awesome. you for that. Thank you very much. All right, Charlie. So I'll be um, going back to my work for the next few years, but my long-term goal is to founding a company related to technology, but um, that's much a longer plan that I can't fulfill in this short video. Mm -hmm. um, but about the Katusa program, um, although it's only a year and a half, we get to work with great people ranging from the all the way from the privates to all the way to some of the generals here in Korea. And uh, that unique opportunity and relationship goes beyond that conscription years. So uh, if some of the Korean males are considering applying to the Katusa program, I would highly recommend the program. And Corporal Koo. Um, so, my school begins in March 2021. Okay. 
and before that period I will probably tra travel around Korea just to you know just have a break and after I get back to school in March next year um, I, I think I'll finish up my studies and get my degree real quick so that I can actually work but once again I still have no idea what to do because you know uh, I mean even in the Katusa program there are a lot of jobs that you can get as a Katusa and it's really different and I really enjoy working in the SGS because of the dynamic environment that it provides right. with not just Katusa soldiers but our um, U.S. Army counterparts, and also there are some, uh, you know, rock uh, Korean Army soldiers and officers, and you really get you really get to see something that you don't, you can't, if you're not as that NSG as Katusa. So I've really enjoy, enjoyed that. But again, um, right now I think it's my it's a time for me to kind of focus on something. And I think I'll probably be focusing my major on finance while fixing it. So. I guess the uh, last final questions that uh, my daughters would like to know is, uh, do you know the members of the BTS um, K-pop group? Do you know at least one of their names? Or do you know what BTS stands for? Yes, uh, BTS stands for Bang Tan Son and Bang. It's like the, the acronym letters for that. And I think I know this leader called, was it Monster? Rat Monster? Yeah. Oh, RN. Yeah, I think he speaks English pretty well. Yeah, pretty well. And he also made like the speech for like the UNs and stuff. Yeah. So it's cool how they're so influential right now through all worldwide right now. One thing uh, I would say about uh, K-pop and BTS is like their PAO for Korea. Um, a lot of places in the world didn't know much about Korea until K-pop came out. So whether you like them, whether you're for them or, or against them, you at least got to uh, give them credit that they're putting Korea, you know, on the map to where people know what uh, what Korea is about. Um, one thing that I've learned in, in the three years that I've been here is in a short time, in one lifespan, in one generation, you know, Korea went from a war-torn country to, uh, you know, one of the most prosperous nations in, in such, a, such a short amount of time. So that's really amazing. And that the fact that you guys have uh, you know, groups like BTS and different K-pop groups that are able to show influence and really speak in a positive message that's, that speaks volumes to the culture of Korea. So. Uh, I know my daughters, they really appreciate that. Um, anything you guys want to say to uh, any of the Team Estrada members? Well, first thing, um, thank you for um, showing interest in the Katusa program because I actually wanted to talk about the Katusa program and explain to some people uh, but I haven't got the opportunity to do so. So thank you for the opportunity. And I've also enjoyed working with NASA and Estrada during my conscription. Um, I learned, really learned a lot from him, so yeah. And I also mentioned this in the farewell ceremony, but um, one of the uh, phrases that we use to describe Katusas is the military ambassadors of Iraq. And but um, I, when I see people like my sergeant and his family, the all six of them, or seven, <laughs> yeah. um, I really think that they're the true ambassadors. So I would like to thank the six children, or five plus one children, for uh, having great love for this country and spreading that uh, love throughout the U.S. and also worldwide once they become uh, seniors like us. That's awesome. Really appreciate appreciate that. Private Kim, did you have anything? Um, well, I just want to thank you, my, my surgeon, um, uh, from like the interviews and you know choosing me yeah. to work here, which is like a great opportunity. And it's really a pity that 
I just got to know all these things in the atmosphere and you as a rookie. And I was like really excited to work with you. And then now that you know, you're know you leaving, it's kind of sad. Yeah. But um, I, I heard you and your team is from Santa Bar Barbara. So yeah. And I, I've never once been there, even though I live in San Diego. So I am planning on to have a trip to the West Coast later. So if I get to, I would like to see you and Definitely. Well, to each of you, you know, that I've worked on my direct uh, team, uh, I've always extended, you know, my family, our home uh, is definitely open to you guys when you come to California and uh, you find yourself in, in Southern California, in the area of San Diego, um, you definitely are welcome to stay at our home. So uh, I appreciate, you know, you guys taking the time. Uh, volunteering to do the interview it means a lot to me and it definitely means a lot to you know team Estrada the girls and stuff like that so from the bottom of my heart I just want to say thank you on my uh, my last day as I get ready to depart Korea so it means a lot I appreciate you guys thanks for everything that you guys have done